How are you doing guys? Welcome to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel. My name is Joshua Daniel George, a social media marketer and online coach and a very frequently asked question that uh, I get is about e-commerce and you know how to get results for e-com, how to set up the ads and so on and so forth. And I'm usually very hesitant to publish content like that um, on YouTube because um, you know that is something that I do offer in my paid um, education program. So I basically offer a coaching program where I show you guys exactly this, you know, how to basically start your own agency, how to get your first clients. But because I have my own, you know, agency that focuses on e-com clients, I usually save like anything e-com related for the coaching group. Why? Because they pay good money for it and I want to be as transparent as possible with this group um, just so that they can get the same results, if not best results than, than I get for my clients. Um, so like I said, with regards to YouTube and any you know type of free content that I put out there, it's very much tailored towards lead generation. And like I said, if someone asks me, you know, can you publish a free video on ecom? I usually say, listen, you know, that is something that I do save for my paid group because you know, like I said, they've paid good money to, to be in that group, and I just want to you know, show it to them there. And yesterday we had the coaching call, so they, today's Monday, I'm actually recording this on the same day as uploading. And yesterday in the coaching group, we basically discussed the middle of the funnel. Um, and this is possibly, you know, applicable to uh, lead generation, etc. But um, obviously the whole call was very much tailored towards e-commerce. And then what I basically do is I explain the theory behind it. I explain and map it out, you know, what you need to do and what kind of situation. And then I'll go into my own business manager and show like real in real time, I'll show the coaching group my own campaigns and my own clients and I'll show them what I'm currently doing. And then in real time, I'll actually set up that campaign. And what I actually wanna do for this video is just to give you guys something, you know, like I said, because usually I do only keep this uh, or leave this to the coaching group. This time I do wanna give you guys some kind of uh, theory on YouTube. So, you know, there is free content uh, with regards to e-com out there, you know, on my YouTube channel. Um, but like I said, you know, if you do want to know more about e-commerce, etc., then you know, I do have to direct you to my uh, basically my coaching group, which is a paid program where I teach you guys, like I said, how to start your own agency, how to get your first clients, you know, build it up, scale it, automate it, so that you two can live life on your own terms. Now, in terms of the structure of uh, the video, I'm basically going to. Um, hop into my computer in a sec so I'll basically share my screen show you guys what is going on I'm recording this on a lavalier mic again because I'm still having some issues with the echo in this uh, apartment so um, for those of you that have not been following along or are new to my channel I've recently purchased an apartment in uh, in the center of Amsterdam and we don't we don't have any furniture as of yet we've ordered a bunch of new stuff we just wanted a completely new apartment with new furniture etc but because of the covid virus um some of the delivery times are a little bit delayed so uh, we, we we don't even have a couch just yet you know that's how uh, how long everything is taken and uh, like i said as soon as everything is there i will do a house tour which is um highly requested already and uh, for now like i said i'm just being very creative with the lavalier mic and uh, i'll record my screen and uh, basically hop into there now. So without rambling on too much, let's hop into the video. No, I don't waste no time. Okay, so here we go, guys. So as you can see, this is a presentation. I have tweaked it slightly because, uh, like I said, you know, this is basically part of the coaching program. Um, so. Some things I've left out, some things I will purposely keep in just to provide you guys with as much um, free value as possible. But like I said, you know, I do need to be careful here because um, those in the coaching program are paying good money for this. Um, so this is strictly theory based. I will not be going into my ad accounts. I will not be going into, um, you know, my own business manager. I will not be setting up this campaign in real time. I just want to show you guys the theory behind it okay so in terms of the middle of the funnel or mof for short this you know obviously falls um just under the top of the funnel and just above the bottom of the funnel for those of you that have never heard of this at all basically when you drive traffic um, especially to an e-com store um, you drive traffic that is relatively cold to the store first, which is called the top of the funnel. Why? Because, you know, these are basically people from a larger audience. You're trying to get them into the funnel first 
and that is the main objective okay it's the main objective is not necessarily to get sales it not necessarily to um you know get a lot of purchases etc the main objective is to just get people through that funnel now with that said um I always optimize everything for purchase from minute one. So all of the campaigns that we'll be discussing in today's video will all be conversion campaigns with uh, so the conversion objective and then optimized for purchase. So the top of the funnel is strictly cold traffic. You know, people that have not yet heard of this econ brand before, have not been on the store before and so on and so forth. And then we basically analyze and see what these people do on the store. You know, uh, what are they looking at? Um, have they viewed contents, you know, have they viewed the items in the store, etc. And then what we do from there is we retarget, for example, people that have been on the website. So website visitors, we retarget people that have uh, been on the Facebook page, retarget people that have been on the Instagram page. So basically we retarget people that haven't shown an indication of interest just yet, but they have already warmed up to the brand. So if they, for example, add to cart or if they initiate checkout, then, but they don't make the purchase, of course, uh, then we retarget them with the bottom of the funnel, which is a catalog sales campaign. And again, you know, if you wanna know more about this, I do need to refer you onto the coaching program. Um, but for now, like I said, the top of funnel is cold. The middle of funnel is you know, retargeting, lukewarm people, people that have already heard of the brand. And then with the bottom of the funnel, we basically try and get them to convert. So in terms of the sort of ad sets that you can create with the top of the funnel, um, I usually go for interest targeting to start out. And then from there, I also set up high intent lookalike audiences. So for example, those that have uh, purchased previously, I will create a, um, a lookalike audience of 1%. And then, like I said, you know, I will upload that into the top of the funnel because these are, despite the fact that it's a lookalike audience, these people have not yet heard of this brand just yet. So that is why they go into the top of the funnel. Then a lot of people also set up low and 10 lookalike audiences. So for example, a 10% lookalike audience of those that have added to cart and so on and so forth. I don't do this all too often. I will test this out. You know, it is part of my testing. Um, phase but usually I will stick to interests until I have got an audience large enough um, you know that you know of the purchase uh, list that is basically able to run as a 1% lookalike audience now there's a quick little mention about the lookalike audience of the purchase uh, list if you upload a static audience for example the purchase list from Shopify then that will always stay the same so that audience does not change over time because it's just a static audience that you've uploaded if you take the pixel purchase list however this does constantly change because we take the list for example of the last 180 days so we tell Facebook okay look at all of the purchases that have come in the last 180 days and then you know find me a lookalike audience like that but 180 days from yesterday is going to be a different audience than 180 days in two months time because you know like I said it constantly evolves every single day you know that 180 days sort of moves up one day so the lookalike audience of that purchase list will also constantly evolve as well and usually you don't really need to, to do anything with that you can just set it up and that like I said that the audience will evolve with your store over time whereas if you do upload the Shopify list you will need to constantly upload Update that and maybe you know re-upload that once once a week or once a month depending on the size of the e-com store then in terms of the middle of the funnel which is what we are going to be discussing today we are going to retarget people that are lukewarm so retarget people that have already been on the store you know already been onto the website already are familiar with the brand have already seen them on Facebook maybe even like the Facebook page maybe they've commented on an Instagram post and so on and so forth and then what you can also do is email you know the email list so people that have um you know for example let's say there's a pop-up and it says hey sign up for our email list and get 10 percent off your next order or anything like that you can also upload that and run that as well because people that are on the email list like i said have heard of the brand then depending on the size of the audience either you can take the facebook engagement from the last 30 days 60 days 120 days or 180 days Usually I will start off with 180 days and then as the store grows along, you know, with basically our service, we can start moving that up a bit more. 
because someone that has engaged with their Facebook page in the last 30 days is obviously going to be warmer than someone that has engaged uh, with the Facebook page 180 days ago. So the shorter the span of days, the warmer the audience, but if the store is not big enough, then obviously, you know, people that have engaged with Facebook in the last 30 days is going to be a relatively small audience. So that is basically what you need to try and play with to find, um, you know, a audience that is big enough to retarget, but also, you know, the highest quality and the warmest audience. Same goes for Instagram, same goes for website visitors. You know, someone that's been on the website within the last 30 days is going to be warmer and is going to recognize the store and the ads more, you know, quicker than someone that was on the store 179 days ago, right? So that is just the way you need to look at it. And that is what you need to play around with depending on the size of the store. Same goes for email list subscribers. Um, what I usually just do is upload the, the static email list from, I don't know, a lifetime. But um, you know, if you want to go specific and if the audience and store is big enough, then you can upload, for example, new subscribers from the last 30 days, new subscribers from the last 60 days, and so on and so forth. And then with the bottom of the funnel, we basically retarget people with a catalog sales campaign that have added a cart but haven't purchased, initiated checkout but haven't purchased, or added payment info and haven't purchased, again, dependent on the size of the store. So if your store is medium to large, um, you know, you're doing less than 100K a month, then what I'll do is just stick to add to cart but haven't purchased in the last 7, 21, um, 7, 14, 21 or 30 days, depending on how big the store is. So if your store is medium sized, then what you can do is try uh, people that have added to cart but haven't purchased in the last 30 days and just see you know how that performs. If it doesn't run, you can even try 60 days, but if you just need to think to yourself, if someone has added something to cart, in the last, like let's say 59 days ago, how likely are they going to react to the advertisement that they see? If it's an impulse purchase, I don't know, um, a pen, for example, then, and they've added it to cart, usually, you know, that is an actual impulse purchase, then 59 days later, they're not gonna see that pen again and think, oh my God, I really need that pen, I you know, I want that discount. But if it's a higher ticket item, let's say a um, very expensive sink or a very expensive faucet, anything like that, and they add it to cart, realize there's additional shipping, and they think, you know what, I don't think I can afford this at this moment in time, maybe another time, um, and they leave the store, and 30 days later, they see that exact item, because obviously that is the catalog sales campaign, they see that exact item um, through an ad again, and there's some kind of incentive, for example, a 5% discount, free shipping, maybe there's a 90-day warranty instead of a 60-day warranty, or anything like that, then they are more likely to purchase, okay? So again, it depends on the size of the store, it depends on how expensive the product is, and also, you know, what kind of product it is. If it's something that um, you're not really too keen about, like a pen, then, um, you know, try and keep that audience as short as possible. And, you know, the difference between, for example, add payment info and add to cart, if someone's added payment info, then they are much, much warmer than someone that has added to cart. However, the amount of people that have added payment info will probably be much smaller than the audience that have added to cart because more people are more likely to add to cart than they are to actually add their payment info. So again, you need to find the balance between quantity and quality there. Um, and usually I will start with add to cart in the last 30 days. So that is the, the funnel in its entirety, basically. What you can also do is exclude certain audiences if you wanna go very specific. If your store is big enough, then I would do this. If your store is just starting out, um, then I'll probably just leave this out. Um, but what you can do with the top of the funnel is exclude website visitors, exclude people that have engaged on Facebook and Instagram, and exclude purchases, of course. If you exclude website visitors, usually exclude the purchases as well. Um, because, you know, how can you, if you exclude everyone that has been on the store, then surely you've excluded everyone that's made the purchase. But the reason for this is because you want to show a different message to those that have already been on the store, to those that have not ever heard of the store before. And that is basically why you wanna separate those. So if you want your middle of funnel to run successfully, then you want to basically focus on those that have been on the website, have engaged on Facebook, etc., and you should wanna show a different message to those people than those that haven't heard of the store at all. Then for the middle of the funnel, you can exclude those who have added to cart, initiated checkout, added payment info, and those who have purchased. Uh, why? Because that is obviously a message that you wanna show them with the bottom of the funnel, so the catalog sales. Otherwise, they are basically seeing, let's say someone has um, been onto the website and they've added to cart, but they haven't uh, made a purchase. 
and you don't ex you know, add those exclusions, then they'll be seeing the middle of the funnel campaign that is actually trying to retarget website visitors, but also the bottom of the funnel campaign at the same time. So you've got a little bit of an audience overlap there. Um, and then for the bottom of funnel, I usually don't have any exclusions at all, but again, it depends on the item. If it's a very expensive drone, for example, you're not gonna buy a second drone within like a week of buying the first drone, right? So then I would exclude purchases. If, for example, it's a pair of sneakers, it's a jersey, um, maybe a fitness supplement, then yeah, by all means, you know, uh, leave the purchases in because people that have already made the purchase are actually more likely to come back and make a repeat purchase again. Or what you can do is exclude purchases from the bottom of the funnel and then have some kind of nature campaign running alongside it that only focuses on people that have already made a purchase and then offer another kind of incentive um, to come back and visit the store again. Again, it depends on the size of your clients or if, you know, if it's your actual store, it depends on the size of your store. So what does the campaign look like? This is how I would set it up. Um, you, obviously, you've got the middle of the funnel campaign. I usually start with the initials of my agency, which is BP, middle of funnel, and then I usually give it a some kind of nickname or something that I can recognize it with. For example, October, if you run this in October, or if you want to have like an additional middle of funnel campaign, you can have like middle of funnel, October, um, Stata Creative, Middle of Funnel, October, Dynamic Creative, and Split Test those two. You know, that is completely up to you. Um, in terms of the ad sets, we've got Middle of Funnel, Facebook engagement, Middle of Funnel, Instagram engagement, Middle of Funnel, website visitors. This should be the way around, VW, it's actually WV, um, and then Middle of Funnel, email list. Now, if your store is relatively small, what I would do is stack Facebook and Instagram together and only run website visitors. And then again, it depends on the size of your email list if you wanna run that as well. So either two, three, or four ad sets. And then every single ad set has got the same images. So we just pick out either the two best performing images or we pick two new images that are still relevant to the brand. So they will recognize that it's the same brand, it's the same store, but just maybe the same image from a different angle or you know the same product but then video rather than image and so on and so forth. So that is up to you. You can split test the two best performing images versus two newer images that are still recognizable in terms of the brand and the store. Then in terms of copy, I always go for testimonials or reviews um, or again, the best performing copy um, from your top of funnel and bottom of funnel campaigns. You can then add that as well and just split test those two in a dynamic creative to see which one performs best. But the middle of funnel Facebook engagement and middle of funnel Instagram engagement, despite being two different ad sets in this case, the ads, so on an ad level, those are the same. So what you can do when you want to set this up is you start with, for example, middle of funnel Facebook engagement, set up um, the two advertisements. So, you know, the best performing copy, best performing images, and then just duplicate it, remove Facebook engagement from the audience or the ad set, and then add Instagram engagement. So other than then the actual audience, nothing else changes. You know, you're still running the same uh, images and still running the same copy. And then what I like to do, um, you know, to be fair, what I've been doing lately is just run a CBO and Dynamic Creative within the one campaign and just letting Facebook decide uh, which is the best performing um, ad set and also the best performing image. So that is all I've got for today. Hope you got something out of this. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, if you want to know more about this, if you want to actually see me set up these campaigns in real time, I highly recommend you guys check out my coaching program. There'll be a link in the description box down below where you can hop on a free consultation course slash strategy session where we can see you know what you actually need help with and if you are a right fit for the program. If we think you're com you know we are confident that we can actually help you set up your own agency and get results for your clients, then we'll offer you a place in the program. If not, then you know we'll, we'll obviously tell you that as well because otherwise you know we are wasting your time and you are wasting our time. But anyway for now I'm going to wrap this video here. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment down below if you'd like to see more ads related content like this. Subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you all in the next video.